you're t- far too excited about talking about your air purifier. <laughs> <laughs> it saved me, man. Mm-hmm. The air purifier saved me. Like, I'm telling you, my allergies would have been so much worse if I didn't have the air purifier. Mm. To be fair, when we were in London and you had that, like, middle of the night, uh, like, pollen-induced asthma attack, like, the air purifier did make a big difference. It did. After that, after that we, we were, like, fine. I, it really helps. I, You know what? I think the air purifier really, really helps with night time because I feel like that's when the pollen settles and it's when you're most irritable. Because, and your body's detoxing. Yeah, your body's detoxing. But also, I just feel like because you're sleeping and there's nothing else going on, everything's quiet, you're more cognizant of, like, symptoms and stuff yeah. like that. I, I never, I never like, that was that was uh, scary, man, I must say. The, I think the... The breathing thing was interesting when because you're the inflammation, goes, yeah, that like, <laughs> it happens like, to you every summer. Yeah, but it's only for a week. Mm-hmm. On like, you, have you noticed it's only for like a week or like a, it's like a, a single day when it's bad, and then it's completely fine. It's always in June, as well. It, and that's weird because I've always found that it's always like a week where it's bad, right? Mm. And it's just so strange. But it's always the lead up to it as well. But I think mine is more so induced with stress. I think it's stress with, oh, yeah, with, for sure. with eating like, not eating poorly, but I think like snacking and then eating, you know, dairy, a lot of dairy. Yeah, it's not eating poorly. It's eating like dairy and cheese for you, uh, for sure. And that's, it's weird though, because like, do you remember last year when mm-hmm. I was like speaking to the GP on the app? So oh, funny yeah, story, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I I tried to book in my GP and I was like, I said to T, I was like, T, I need an inhaler because I don't want to, you know, have this breathing difficulty. You know, mm-hmm. I want to go to the gym and I've got, I got, I got shit to do. And well, I also like, because when you do have that breathing episode, like yeah. it's extreme. So it's good it to extreme. have that backup. So I ran the GP, couldn't get the GP appointment. And they were like, yeah, call back tomorrow, call back tomorrow. Um, all the appointments are gone for the day. I was like, are you actually kidding me? Like... I need an appointment. I didn't get a chance to call this morning, so I just can't call up a GP. And then I paid like £25 to go to a private GP. And the guy was like, yeah, we need to do like your VOCs and get like a, you know, um, a device to attach it to your oxygen levels and stuff. And I was like, bro, just give me an inhaler. Yeah. I just I, don't, I just need the blue I one. I just need the blue inhaler. <laughs> and he was just like... Not the brown was, one, the blue one. And he was like, I, I remember he was like, oh, you, you clearly know what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah. I know what's going on. I know it's. My, I don't mm-hmm. have like. I don't need an inhaler yeah. on a regular just need basis. Just in the cupboard. I just for... need it in the cupboard because if it kicks off, then I know that I need like the inhaler just to sort me sort Emergency. me out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I remember he he didn't. He wasn't a bad dude. Like I think he was a really good GP and he was trying to support. But he was obviously ticking his boxes. Well, and... also he has to cover himself. Yeah. So like you so forget that like yeah. he could be open to lawsuits. So he has to of course tick his boxes. He can't just be handing out medication yeah. to anyone like pills. I just give him the damn inhaler. And I remember <laughs> I took the inhaler. It's fine. But the funny thing was, I I think was in London when I had it. When I had it and I didn't use an inhaler at all. That was like three years ago now. Mm. Two years ago, yeah, like three years ago mm. now, and. When it kicked off, I remember I just had to get out of the bedroom because the heat added to it as well, not mm-hmm. being able to breathe. And I remember I went straight to the cupboard. I took like seven Haller stops, which is like, like the, the green chewables, had like two sachets, drank loads of water, and then just basically just sat on the sofa. And I'm not going to lie, I was start by like naked on the sofa, just like going, Whoa, just breathe, breathe. And then I remember just falling asleep. And I think about 6 a.m., you woke up and going, where the heck is Eric? Is he? And I was like, just up here. In the <laughs> just room. meditating like Yoda on the sofa <laughs> just, just, <naked>. yeah. <laughs> But it, it, it kind of shows you that, like, uh, you know, even me, someone who's like detoxed histamine significantly, mm. the immune system's still overreactive. And like, I always say, like, I'm histamine free, and I am. But allergies and pollen season so, so tough. And, mm. you know, actually, the reason why we were going to do this recording today, so. It's allergy season, right? And every single question we're being asked at the moment is about allergies at the moment. Everyone's like, Well, oh, hay fever. Yeah, hay fever. And they're like, Oh, Not allergies. Hay fever, hay fever, hay fever. <laughs> Let's be real. Okay, hay fever. And the reason why hay fever has become such a popular topic is because er- so many people are suffering. Mm-hmm. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll say this I'll say this. This isn't a joke, actually. Hay fever is no joke. And I want to make a joke out of it because that's my personality mm. but i just can't make a joke out of it like i got some statistics i thought you know what i need to get some stats for this because before we Hit did me recording with the stats. go on right 
so I went onto the allergy website, checked them all out, and one thing that I found was incredible, right? So according to Kleenex, right? Kleenex, yes, Kleenex. They did a study. I know, I can't believe Kleenex did a study. They did the a study. The fact that you're quoting Kleenex. I know. Okay, <laughs> they did on. a study, right? With Allergy UK. And they said around 49% of people reported suffering with hay fever symptoms. Four. Mm. 9% are you taking the actual piss right I believe it, yeah. and then so then I was like okay 49% guarantee I, it wasn't that in the 90s yeah guarantee it wasn't I, that in the 90s. I mean I haven't checked but yeah oh no oh T I'm checking as we speak you got the receipts my, my, I'm, I'm getting the receipts now because the next video I'm going to drop on our Instagram channel mm. is about the statistics on allergies mm. and how much they've increased right I'm doing my research and I'm going through it and I was obviously Kleenex are going to do this research because let's be honest like them hay fever sufferers need <laughs> tissues right <laughs> and then I started looking into it right and they this statistic came up they said the UK has some of the highest prevalent rates of allergic conditions allergic con conditions in the world with over 20% of the population affected by one or more allergic disorder. Mm. So let me just say this again, because I've said this so many times. The root cause of histamine symptoms, allergies, whatever you want to call it, is an overactive immune system. Because if you've got more than one allergic disorder, mm -hmm. that means you've got an overactive immune system because an mm. overactive immune system is what triggers mast mm -hmm. cells to release histamine. And so I went through these statistics, T, and I was just, I literally couldn't believe it. It, goes, it gets worse, right? Allergic rhinitis is the most common form of non-infectious rhinitis affecting between 10 to 15% of children and 26% of adults. That was in 2017. Mm. But wait, it gets a little bit worse. It's getting worse. I, I know, I'm sorry. I just had to do statistics because you got to learn this, right? More than 40% of patients with allergic rhinitis have asthma and more than 80% of asthmatic patients suffer with rhinitis. <laughs> also, patients with rhinitis have an increased risk of developing asthma no shit Sherlock well also I mean <laughs> I think just for um context as well that's quite a commonly known kind of the clinical trifecta of like asthma hay fever and like dermatitis so it's like a history some, cascade some sort of like eczema it's very common to have one of those three in conditions in a family if not like for a person to have multiples of those they tend to travel together um which the connector being histamine so it's not well, that th this is it that was crazy that these tissues came out right mm. and none of them were talking about histamine and its role and I actually, of course not and this was funny right so i got into this one statistic it said up to 57 percent of adult patients and up to 88 percent of children with allergic rhinitis have sleep problems including micro arousals leading to daytime fatigue and somnolence and decreased cognitive functioning. And what is the root root solution mm -hmm. on the NICE pathway, the NHS pathways? The first go-to is antihistamines. And what's the first side effect that's written on every single H1 histamine 1 receptor and antihistamine may cause drowsiness Doesn't and matter. fatigue? Mm -hmm. And do you, know the, do you know what the... The thing that pisses me off the most in this right is, mm. so the UK economy, we're in, we're, we were an industrial economy, but we're more of a service user economy. And so the, the fact is, do do not take, you know, be, or was it, do not take antihistamines when operating heavy machinery or driving. Like, how many people in the UK drive? And like, how many of us are sitting behind desks and actually how many working? Of us drive while taking antihistamines. Yeah, but like, but the think about think about the logic of this, right? Mm. Forget the heavy machinery. You imagine, so your your allergies are kicking off at night time, so you get lack of sleep. You then wake up in the morning. You take an antihistamine. You then feel drowsy. So then your go to is to get drink coffee or do other things that can also eat stimulate sugar. eat sugar that also Stimulates stimulate histamine production yeah, yeah. and you're just like uh, it's a never ending story and antihistamines I've, I'm going to say this with chest and I said it from Compton day from day one an antihistamine simply inhibits histamine from attaching to receptor mm -hmm. it doesn't get rid of histamine 
and T, I think. Do you remember when we were when we before we started recording this? Because this is a topic that we we were going to bring up, right? Uh, do you remember when I walked in? Was it last week? And I said to you, I was like, T, I, I've got a customer, and she's asking me for advice because a practitioner sent her across, and mm. I don't know what to do because she's on four cetirizine hydrochlorides every single day mm. and i said and then the doctor on top of that added another antihistamine which i think was from no not from otadine effects of venadine effects of venadine on top of that mm. and i was like tracy how can you feel like a zombie how can you do that because an antihistamine has a half-life of between eight to ten hours if you're taking one every single one four times a day mm -hmm. that means you have an over you have an over not just not over production mm -hmm. but you have too much histamine in the system mm. and so when you look at allergies and hay fever the go-to is to look at antihistamines and that's like one of the main focuses when we met your allergies they weren't bad but i remember i still remember the fact that we bought a air purifier for your bedroom in london because mm -hmm. you needed it i remember you were like at night time, you were like, I'm dying. Like, this is an intense amount of hay fever. Well, I think for context, though, I mean, I don't like to brag, but I kind of feel like I'm an expert hay fever sufferer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be an expert hay fever sufferer? Trust and believe. <laughs> if it's possible to be an expert hay fever sufferer, that is me. <laughs> because since I was a child, I have, like, not been able to go outside um, I have gone to, like, my poor mom dragged me to every sort of, you know, practitioner, specialist, doctor, herbalist, um, acupuncturist, um, I don't know, reflexologist, all these different people to try and, like, find a solution for my hay fever because it was so severe that, like, my eyes would swell up. I, like, I couldn't breathe. I was on inhalers. They thought I might have asthma. Um, my nose was raw red. Um, I literally, my only solution as a kid was literally to like for my mom to keep me indoors with cold tea bags on my eyes because yeah, the tannins helps. can be yeah, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Um, which I, of course, would proceed to just like wiping all over my body because I was a kid and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, but which isn't obviously a solution for a child because like the summer is supposed to be the most fun time ever mm. um but that was what helped so that's what we did and then it wasn't until maybe I'm gonna say maybe I was like 12 13 years of age um I mean one thing is my diet did clean up a lot because I got quite interested in uh, like sport and fitness so I was kind of eating better because of that but also I I think I like came across a random article that suggested a potential link between dairy and hay fever and this was like completely out of the context of histamine um but I read that and I was so desperate that I just like removed all dairy from my life and obviously replaced it with all soy because that was like the only alternative back then um and it made such a difference like such a difference so I was completely convinced like dairy free that's what helped me so much but it still it didn't get rid of the symptoms completely like I still needed mm. to take antihistamines and eventually as I kind of progressed in my career when I went to when I got into the nutrition field and I was studying I learned about things like quercetin romelin da, 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 da. Um, and I added those to my routine I did all of the like physical barriers and like showering 24 7 um and all of that and it did like it massively helped my symptoms. Like I was able to actually go outside yeah. uh, for a summer, which is was a big deal for me. Um, but the problem was that I needed to be absolutely perfect at that routine in order to get to the point where I just had slightly itchy eyes or like I might like sneeze a little bit or, you know, I might have a slightly runny nose or, you know, just like 
almost to get me to like a mild hay fever level but I had to be perfect the minute I was like out and if I slipped up and had an ice cream in the sun or um, you know something like that then immediately my symptoms would kind of get worse Um, and obviously now on this side of things I understand what was happening in that and because of all of that sacrifice and diligence towards kind of my own protocols that we love to do in the summer and I wasn't able to do any of that and I grew to resent it a lot and I think when we met and uh, when we were dating and things and kind of bringing to that point where you got me (laughs) (laughs) um, where we got to the point where you know you bought me that air purifier I think I had come to the point where I was at a level with like my diet lifestyle bits where I pretty much was like absolutely fine and yeah. only and like instead of like previously where I had like four to six months mm. of hay fever mm. I was kind of down to like one or two peak months and that was and it was only bad if I was literally in the like in a field or like if it was really really high pollen levels and that I know that time you're talking about like that was that was when the weather was so hot in London and it was a really high pollen season and it was a struggle but also I was being more lax with myself because I was just so fed up of not being able to have like a drink in the park. By the way, I know (laughs) (laughs) it's making my one of those lies. I'm like, (laughs) Um, and so because of that, because I was like, you know, f this, I want to, you know, enjoy myself with my friends and things like that. I was a young girl in the city. Um, I did suffer more with my symptoms, and so I just kind of had to trudge through, um, Mm. and the air purifier did really really help a lot but it didn't solve things it's completely not, no it won't do yeah yeah what did really really help if we're being real real is taking doxperment i mean i understand i like are you because you're re- reducing the histamine mm-hmm. so i'm going to bring it back a bit to one mm. of the questions i want to ask you because you taught me this and i think it opened my eyes my eyes up and my mind up a lot to allergy season dairy Mm. because I've even removed things like oat milk and cashew milk and any or coconut milk Mm -hmm. just because I don't want anything that's going to trigger anything mucusy in my Mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So what is the link between dairy and allergies? I mean, I think on, well, that's a very broad question, but I guess focusing more on kind of the hay fever dairy link. But we can definitely do a dairy uh, allergies a dairy one, allergies yeah. thing because that's I have a lot that's to say. That's a long conversation. Um, <laughs> I guess I think on face value, uh, dairy is a high histamine food, um, and so it's when it's ingested, it's going to have higher levels of histamine, which is going to fill up that bucket. Another aspect is that there are a lot of people out there that just happen to be intolerant or kind of even anywhere in the spectrum from sensitive to intolerant to like close to allergic level um, with dairy. Um, Again, I can go into that in more detail in another video as to why that is. Um, And thirdly, I think there's four um, conditions or ailments like hay fever where there is going to be a mucousy aspect so you know you get your kind of mucousy eyes mucousy nose mucousy throat um, because of that histamine reaction because dairy is quite uh, viscose and creamy it can just enhance the feeling of those symptoms so like enhance the mucousy feeling so it's almost like a physical element that can make the symptoms feel worse than they might be otherwise if Mm. if you will it's another reason why often you hear like singers won't take dairy before singing because it can just kind of congest the 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 throat a little bit that's interesting um so yeah it can be an issue for a lot of people that's not saying it's an issue for everyone like if you have absolutely zero uh reaction to dairy Mm. but you have hay fever it's going to be very few people probably that have that situation but you know for some people they can take some high histamine foods and maybe they have really good digestive system they don't have gut issues they don't have an underlying you know intolerance to that and they're fine but it's 
I actually don't think I've come across someone that has bad hay fever that hasn't had an issue with dairy, but I'm I'm willing to stay open minded on that. I mean, yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting topic because I found with like hay fever, if I had anything with dairy in there, mm. it made my symptoms worse. So that could probably explain it, which is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. So all right, let's let's move to the solutions because I think anyone who's come to watch this video will want to know what the solutions are mm. and personally you we've both mentioned it now it's got to be an air purifier <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. you were just dying to I talk about dying. that bloody air purifier I'm, my air purifier my, my Honestly, if you sh- to be fair i like i took the piss out of you a lot mm. when you started with the air purifier because you're such a gadget person and i am not a gadget person but to be fair it actually makes such a difference mm. and particularly when rivi was born because you know babies um kind of air passageways are so tiny and like any little speck of anything can irritate them it really helped having that on at night as well oh but so, anyway yeah, go yeah. explain your purifier and then we'll pick it up so i came across an air purifier it got a mention in conversation one day and i mm. thought oh yeah we have a mint the pollen filters in the vehicles like put mm. one in, in the home so i bought this and i've got a couple of them now we've got a couple in the office we've got a couple at home mm. and if during allergy season I'll, I'll like have my face in front of this just breathing in the fresh air and obviously the one of the big things i will say to people is you need to change the filter on these like at least once every month change the filter i know they say you can change it like every three or four months but i would change it sooner rather than later particularly during allergy yeah. season like when it's working harder for you but do you know what I, I, and, and what i'll do for that air purifier that i'm using because I've, I've bought one i've tried it i've tested it and i found it quite beneficial i'll stick the link for it in in the description it's literally available on amazon it's quite it's actually about 50 quid i think so it's not actually mm-hmm. breaking the bank or anything mm-hmm. like that but that really helped with kind of purifying the air around at night time mm-hmm. especially when we're sleeping and in the heat it was just incredible mm-hmm. but do you know what really really helped mm-hmm. was the humidifier you know it's just just keeping think? the humidifier really helped i felt because we tried it with rivi mm-hmm. when you know with her chest and her breathing and we it really helped kind of soothe her soothe her mm-hmm. like breathing except during the summer months because uh, the dry heat yeah and so i, I mean i don't get really like uh, you know my past aside with the place that i am with my health i don't yeah. really get the kind of chestiness uh chesty issues with uh, pollen even in the height of pollen season anymore yeah. um, but you definitely it triggers like asthma in you so if you think the humidifier I guess again yeah just keeping everything nice and moist because it's the moisture that I found so like mm. the the, the the purifier was really great for that purpose of it but the humidifier just to put that moisture in the air with the dry heat was mm. I felt was really mm. really powerful they're my like first go to's but I think one of the easiest solutions uh, is and like it's tough, but just washing your face when you come back in and washing your hands and changing your clothes. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I still um, really rate some of those kind of classic hay fever recommendations, like having a proper shower, letting the water run over your face, through your hair. I know it's annoying, ladies, because <laughs> I do not want to wash my hair every single day. It's a yeah. pain in the butt, but it do, like pollen does get trapped in your hair. So I do think kind of rinsing every single evening after being out in, in the pollen-filled air, closing your windows, changing your clothes, bed sheets uh, changing well. bed sheets, uh, something that I find so good for when I am going out and about is also that physical barrier. So putting, you know, some um, like balm or like salve or ointment. Mm. I really like that. um, The lanolin balm, um, which technically is like nipple cream. (laughs) 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 I have just had a baby, so it's not weird that I have that. (laughs) Um, But it's any sort of, you can like Vaseline or like anything like that. And you just put it on your nose. And so when you're out, the pollen sticks to that. And so you get a reduced intake up your nose. And then glasses as well that have a tight band. Like it does help. Physical Um, barriers do The glasses do. Do you know what's pretty funny, right? Do you know in, in India... And like in, they used to say Ayurvedically during allergy season mm. was to use mustard oil. Oh, God. They would, it, it, <laughs> it, and my mom did it when we were kids. And I remember like, like. Your mom did it when you were kids. You've done that to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
I was trying to get away from that part of the conversation. You yeah. think I haven't had mustard oil shoved up my nostrils? <laughs> that was so Please. funny. <laughs> but the it does oil, work though. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does help. It's an alternative actually. Like if you don't yeah. um, have, you know, something like the Olive lanolin oil cream well, or whatever, do, yeah. any sort, like just go down to your kitchen, any sort of oil, like rub your rub your nostrils <laughs> with it. it. But the thing is like showering, rubbing like crank barriers is always important. Mm. But I think the main for me was as well was nettle tea I nettle found, tea is good I found yeah, nettle tea yeah, really yeah. interesting right but for, I'm, I don't want to bring it to nettle tea do you know what I want to talk about actually local honey mm. you, you know like that's microimmune therapy mm-hmm. where you're exposing is, is it I'm right microimmune yeah, therapy yeah, 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 yeah. you're exposing the body to a little bit of honey of local pollen of local though. pollen yeah, right yeah, yeah. but the only issue with that is this right you go abroad or you go to you go to another city mm-hmm. or another place where the pollen's completely different, mm-hmm. you're screwed. So but also but you are and you aren't because you may get unlucky, but actually a lot of people find that when they travel abroad their symptoms aren't as bad because they're yeah. allergic to their local pollen. But the UK's different, yeah. I think. Man. And also I think it's important on the honey piece because mm. I did that when I was a kid. Mm. And I do like I've read the research and I do think think in theory there's value to it if you're getting proper like local and it has to be raw honey i'm going to get in trouble uh recommending that but um and yeah it has to be local to your area like pollinated with the trees that you you are surrounded with and so in theory i think that that can be great but in practice, that's something that really needs to be started very, very early in the season and yeah. for a, a long, long time. Like I would say even like I'm going to get in trouble for saying like, you know, even a few years to kind of build up your your tolerance to that. Oh, and I really? think, well, j- this is in my experience and mm. my my kind of, I guess, experience knowing also how these how these things work yeah i think it's a great additional therapy Mm. and probably a good point of call for people that have mild hay fever but if you have severe hay fever like i'm talking about the people that like literally ice streaming or you bring a bunch of flowers into the house and you're literally like red and blotchy and swollen within like 10 minutes like because that's that's my level of hay fever it's not going to make a massive difference you can do it additionally yeah but if you want to feel better in like allergy season and during the summer months then there's a lot of other things you need to be doing first Mm. so that's all I'd say about that because I think you know there's lots of lovely um articles online in fact you'll probably find a few online that have my name to it that um you know point out kind of all of these different things that you could like natural remedies for hay fever and things like that and all of them do have a place, but I think you need to understand yourself and your situation mm. because some of them will be relevant for, you know, mild hay fever sufferers. But if you're suffering really, really badly, then you, you're you either going to have to do a combination of them or you're going to need to go for the heavier hitters, which is managing your histamine load and I mean, obviously, from our perspective, and I'm a big fan of using a binder like Tox Prevent during those heavy months. Not like Tox Prevent, Tox Prevent. Well, Tox Prevent. <laughs> I mean, this this is the thing. Like when you kind of get into the histamine and allergy realm, looking at hay fever, mm. preventative and be and being preventative is the best medicine for it. Mm. And I can't stress this enough. Like if you're suffering and you know you're going to suffer with allergies Mm -hmm. you need to detox histamine because it's your immune system that's overreacting to pollen because it thinks Mm -hmm. it's bad Mm -hmm. and because it's thinking it's bad it's literally tinging the body and saying right release histamine yeah yeah, attached to that yeah we're under (laughs) attack and it's triggering those symptoms because you gotta remember when you're crying and you're sneezing that's your body, that's a histamine response and your body's mm-hmm. trying to push the pollen out your system. So if you're sneezing and if you're crying, don't stop it. Yeah, and let yeah, your body yeah. go through that that hate, that sneezing attack or whatever it is and let your eyes stream. Feel your feelings. Yeah, like feel mm-hmm, your feelings. Mm-hmm. But like no, it's, 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 it's true, but it's, it means that your body's trying to get rid of the pollen into it. But it also means, all right, if you're getting that attack, go wash your face. Yeah, Go, yeah, go yeah, re-wash yeah, your yeah, face. 100%. And then be preventative. Like 
toxaparent is a game changer mm-hmm. for seasonal allergies because of the fact that it reduces the histamine load in the body mm-hmm. and it frees up the natural like the natural um antihistamine that's based in the body which mm-hmm. is called hnmt mm-hmm. which is the natural enter that breaks down hmt in the muscles and tissues Mm -hmm. that will then break it down Mm -hmm. so it kind of gives that freedom don't get me wrong it's not going to completely get rid of allergies but what it i found it does personally and what a lot of people found personally is that it reduced the the, how long the allergies last Mm -hmm. for like i said i get hay fever at the start like i still get it and but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be well that's what i was going to say so like i think if you're not if you're coming at allergy season from a place where you have a significant histamine overload, um, you're you're already going to be at a deficit. So you're probably going to head in and not have, you know, there, there's not going to be much out there that's going to be able to kind of make you be completely symptomless if you're going in um, in that sense. But I think I think both of us have gotten to a place with our hay fever where, you know, I would say we're in the very mild category of of sufferers, whereas both of us were in the severe category. So I think that in and of itself is pretty amazing. And I would say that's mainly through kind of healing our bodies. So, you know, how we eat, what we expose ourselves to in the environment, all of the different things that that we talk about. Um, But that's when we're maintaining those kind of practices so when we're staying away from you know dairy as a food for both of us that um definitely it's we both have like a mild no, no, no. ice cream be delicious i know, Girl, I know. That ice cream be delicious <laughs> but like that's what i'm saying so you know we've done our you know histamine overload tox prevent protocol we've done all of the the groundwork and so it means that actually unless we're literally sitting in the middle of a field Mm. um, during the summer, generally speaking, we don't really need to take or do anything. However, Mm. I'm going to be real. What I love about Toxic Revent is the fact that I'm now in a position that even in the height of hay fever season, I can go and sit in the park with my friends have, you know, a glass of wine, have a picnic, go and have an ice cream, like do all of those lovely summer, like fun things, sit in the back garden and have a barbecue. And I can do that and be totally fine because those are all the things, by the way, that trigger histamine in me, white wine, um, dairy, anything like that. But I can actually do that now. And how I do that is I take, I know that it's going to happen. So I yeah. take my tox for event, yeah. go do the biz, which is awesome. Enjoy my wine, enjoy my bits, sit out in the sun, not be scared of grass. <laughs> Um, and then when I come back in, you know, I take my tox prevent again and I'll go and I'll shower and I'll dutifully wash my hair, which is a pain, but it is what it is. And I feel fine put on the air purifier to like cover ourselves extra and like it makes it a choice instead of and so it like brings the power back to you because it's like okay I know that I'm about to sit out in a pollen filled atmosphere for the next you know five hours but I'm choosing to do this Mm. and I have a protocol in place I mean protocol literally throw a sachet in my bag and I can just throw it in water and have it but I have the measures in place that I know I will be okay. And for me, that's so worth it. It's actually made summers fun again Mm. because I don't want to be dramatic, but when you're severely suffering, like summer sucks. Yeah. It really does. Can I I say actually, like talking of truth, you know what truth really like I really appreciate that actually makes me feel really satisfied? The fact that I don't take antihistamines anymore. Oh um, yeah, you know, I didn't you, even talk about like I'm, all the side effects. Yeah, because yeah. like, you know what, right? The one thing that used to bother me was feeling lethargic and tired mm-hmm. all the time. Like, don't get me wrong, when I was taking antihistamines, I wasn't the most healthiest of people. Mm. But I think what bothered me the most was the exhaustion and tiredness from it. Mm-hmm. Because every time I took an antihistamine, because they're first generation antihistamines, they, yeah. they oh. cross the blood brain barrier. Mm-hmm. So they're not just turning off the histamine one receptor, they're also turning off the histamine three receptor. And if you want to know about histamine receptors, 
go to our Instagram channel. I've done a load of content mm-hmm. on histamine receptors. Those but, old school antihistamines we brought, they brought yeah. out that non-drowsy. Ooh. But no, but T, the non-drowsy's gone. There's no non-drowsy anymore because basically they actually dis- they discovered, it used to be um, lorotidine used to be the non no, no, Lerotin was the first one. And it's Lerotogene was the non-drowsy. non-drowsy. They, made that, they made a non-drowsy version of that because that's what I used to take. T, it, the label's gone. It was on the label. It's now been removed. Really? Yeah. You know what's because so funny? They, they passed Blueberry Maria. Because I haven't taken antihistamines for so long yeah. and because I'm not like actively practicing, I didn't realise that they had taken away the non-drowsy. Why? Yes, because they passed the Blueberry Maria and they realize they t- they turn off more than the histamine one receptor. They turn yeah, off the histamine yeah, three yeah, receptor yeah, yeah, yeah. because that was the so issue with them. They can't take it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they removed that claim. It's completely yeah. gone. So, in, and if you read the claim on them now, they all say do not operate heavy yeah. machinery. So, I'm but sorry about my rant the first time, but this is why I'm ranting about it. No, don't apologize. It's, I'm not, not even apologizing for it. I think yeah. it, the rant came about because of the fact that the go to for allergies and pollen season is antihistamines but we're not addressing the side effects that come off the back of it and well i think we associate allergy season with antihistamines but then also with feeling drowsy and i think we because histamine overload makes you drowsy anyway i think you just assume that that's what's happening as opposed to like it's doubling down because of those tablets that you're taking. Yeah, like, but uh, it, for anyone that's taking antihistamines for allergy season, take Toxaparent because when you're taking an antihistamine, mm. all it's doing is blocking a histamine receptor. So the histamine's not being able to attach that re- to that receptor and trigger a symptom. But the problem is the histamine's still circulating. Mm. And because it's still circulating, the minute the antihistamine wears off, the receptor's mm-hmm. re-triggered and then you get the symptoms mm. and this is why it's important to take a, a, a binder mm-hmm. with an antihistamine and well because at least because at least with the tox or with the binder it's take yeah it's taking that histamine and it's removing it from your body so you know if you think about it where like during pollen season you're stepping outside you're exposed to tons of pollen you have loads of histamine in your body ah too much histamine floating around take your tox prevent binds to it removes it from your body step outside again get exposed to loads of pollen yeah. histamine ah take your binder da, 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 da. obviously we're not saying that's a long term solution because as we say there's a lot of other things that you Prevention. should kind of clean up in, yeah. in your time and obviously you don't want to go overboard with things that don't fully agree with your body so we're not saying like oh like pound the cheese and like take, <laughs> take like a drink bottles and bottles of wine but I think you know there should be space in life for fun enjoyment, and enjoyment. Yeah. And even if you are experiencing health conditions and ailments and things like that, it shouldn't take away the enjoyment. Mm. Like you should be able to have fun without feeling like you're having a pollen hangover, you know, or a histamine hangover the next day. Yeah, that, I think that histamine hangover, that like tiredness and exhaustion is what gets people. Mm. And it just ruins, it ruins the summer. Like it ruins summers for me. And yeah, um, Thank you, everyone, for listening today. I think there's a lot of good information on allergies and a lot of, like, really... Hopefully. (laughs) Yeah, but I think really simple and easy solutions that we can implement for our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And don't let the statistics scare you. Like I said, there's more to an overactive system than histamine, and we're going to produce a lot more videos on what's producing this epidemic of allergies. And I think we'll produce more content about what's triggering it. Um, Mm -hmm. And as per usual, I'll put all the links in below of all the things that we've talked about, things like nettle tea and like the air purifier. And if you have any questions or maybe you've got some solutions on allergies that you want to share. Yeah, share your thoughts with us because I'd be really interested to hear, you know, how do you prepare for allergy season? What are the things that you absolutely swear by? What are things maybe you've tried but haven't worked for you? Like, let's have a conversation because I really think that a lot of this is about giving you the choice back, taking back the power yourself. And so if you you have the choice to feel your symptoms or to feel great. Yeah, 100%. And you know? if you enjoyed this video, hit a like. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.